And how does your approach change uh, when you when you're getting up to? Um, obviously, filmmaking is its own separate thing. Um, but when you're getting up to work on a screenplay versus a novel versus now a musical, or I think you wrote the lyrics to a couple of the songs in, um, uh, in your first film as well. Yeah. So how does your does your approach change to writing those very different types of things? Um, I think that, you know, uh, the physical process of writing stays, stays similar in the whether I'm writing a screenplay or a novel. I always try to do it first thing in the morning and, and get up, maybe go for a run or a walk to clear my head, to maybe listen to those Spotify playlists that I've been building that, that have a meaning to that story for me. And then, um, you know, then I'll have something to eat and, and maybe scan the New York Times for a bit more inspiration and then head into my writing cabin and just try to get those, you know, those pages done so that by the time the rest of the day comes around, because once I find that once you get into email and I'll just do this and I'll just call that guy, it's just, you know, you, your writing time can go. So I'm kind of disciplined about doing that in the morning. Uh, but the process is, is much the same, I would say. So what time are you starting typically in the morning? Well, you know, I like to go to bed early and get up early and I'm, I tend to be up by six, most mornings, six, six thirty, get out there, you know, get, because I like to be, because it takes me a couple of hours, I guess, by the time I go to, you know, have a run, take a shower, have breakfast, all of that stuff. Uh, but I like to be, you know, at my desk by 8, 8.30 in an ideal work so that I can work through to lunchtime and know that i got a good solid block of crazy work done. And the writing cabin, is that a short stroll from the house? Is it it's right like out the back door? It's like five steps from the house. We don't have a huge garden, but this, uh, so this was... Yeah, you know, over the last few years, my, my partner had now was always saying, why aren't you writing a book? Why aren't you writing a book? And I'm like, you know, it's impossible in the house. You know, we have two kids. But, you know, the, the doorbell's always going. You're always on the phone. Somebody's always asking me something, or emails. And so she didn't say anything. But, you know, she's like, hmm. I was like, you know, it would be great to have a room of my own in the next house that we have, whenever that might be. And then suddenly these guys appeared, you know, with all these block, you know, planks of wood and stuff like that. And they started putting this thing up in the garden. And it was like the best Christmas present I ever got because it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's insulated. It's got heat and, and, uh, and light. And it just is kind of a separation. You know, I think when, you, when I go out there, I know that's what I'm going to be working on. I don't take my phone out there. Um, people know that they shouldn't come out and disturb me unless it's super, super urgent. And it's just, I think it's moving to a different headspace. And, and that, you know, what Virginia Woolf talked about, a, a room of your own, it's so important. So it was, a, it was a surprise cabin? Were you able to have input into it by the before it was done, or? Uh, a little bit, and the color of the, you know, but it's kind of, it's just a cute wooden cabin. I was just so thrilled to get to get that, you know, it was just literally the best present ever. So, yeah, so it was, it was a big surprise, and uh, it made a huge difference, honestly, to my writing and my output. Because I think when you have kids and you have... Um, a busy life, you know, because we're juggling film, we have a film production company, uh, so I write for film, I direct for film, I direct for TV, and and write novels, it's really great to have a space that is just about that pure creative process. Do you, um, do you hand write, or do you take a computer out there, and if so, do you allow it to be on the internet? Uh, I do have a computer out there, I have a big screen, um, and I do have internet. It's it's rather slow, so it's not very tempting. But I it, I do find it important because sometimes I I want to just jump online and just check something quick while I'm writing, uh, or or do a bit of research. I'll even do my research out there as well. So yeah, I do have internet, but I don't have any email, um, you know, any uh, notifications, any WhatsApp, anything like that. So it's just purely a link to the outside world. And I know that uh, the film industry uh, is a lot of hurry up and wait sometimes or a lot of, oh, we love this. Now let us put it through five more hurdles before we can get any kind of start date or anything else. Huh? So are you able to kind of write in the gaps while you're waiting for the stars to align to go move on the next project? Yes, that, that's exactly it. And I think that's what's so great about about being able to do all these things is that I, I you know, sometimes, you know, you write a screenplay and it's not like, a month later it's in production it's just it drags as all the money gets put together you have meetings whatever so during those downtimes i i'm always we're developing other projects where um 
I'm writing books, it's it's great to be able to switch between the two. You know, when we uh, chatted with Greg Melman, who is also a screenwriter and, and filmmaker. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> he told me that he didn't even bother sending his book uh, to an agent or an editor. He said, no, I'm self-publishing. It's all 100% me. Nobody is weighing in on this thing. I'm doing this. <laughs> and it was a wonderful refuge uh, yep. from, from, from that Hollywood lifestyle of uh, yep. waiting until everybody gets on board. There is that, yeah. Listen, with the publishing industry, I think it's, it's just tough to get into and, and tough to find that agent and that publisher for sure. Um, and I think self-publishing is so great that it gives you know voices to people that you know other people don't deem commercial enough to, for them to be with a with a publisher for whatever reason. So I think it's very important. But for me, I find a big difference between between even having an agent and a mainstream publisher. It's there's a lot more respect for the author in that process. And you know if there are edits, it's definitely what do you think about this, and if you know, and they'll, they'll give you suggestions and then lead you to it. And in the case of the Athena Protocol, I found that those edits were really helpful and helped elevate it to be, make it more than what I want of what I wanted. But in the movie industry, that kind of interference can sometimes be ridiculous or take you completely off the track of what you what you creatively had in mind. So which is partly why we, we've worked as independent filmmakers with our own company for such a long time. I suppose the flip side of that would be that uh, when you're working on your novel, it's all you. There's no wonderful actress to come in and, and, and bring her piece to it. It's uh, whatever you've got up here is what you've got to work with, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's all, that's the, well, you know, it's, it's the writer is everything. And, but, you know, that's great, too. I, I think it's, that's, that's what our imaginations are for. So it's nice to be able to do that. And so I know your first full-length film was based on your novel, so I'm assuming you broke out as a novelist first and then a filmmaker? Uh, yes, I did. I did. So my, my, my first full-length piece of work was a screenplay, actually, based off a short story that had been published, and, um, and that got optioned, but it, it didn't get made. Um, and then while that was in progress, I was working on my first novel, and after that got sold and it won a couple of prizes and, and, and you know, got some traction, um, I kind of just went for it. I was working as uh, at another job. You had a day job at that point? Yeah, I did. I was working actually in my dad's company. It was financial services and stuff like that. It was not at all what I wanted to be doing. But I also, you know, you know my parents had a strong work ethic. It wasn't like you could say, oh, I, I'm going to just stay home and be a writer. I felt like I had to prove myself. So once I'd had something optioned, I had some things published and my book was, you know, published as well. Then I felt, okay, I, you know, I, I want to just give this a go full time. So how many books did you have to write before you got somebody interested in that first one? Or was it the first one that you wrote? It was the first one. It was the first one. And I, you know, I, every writer goes through that rejection process of agents and, and publishers. And, you know, that was no different, but, uh, you know, it was, it was pretty quick that I found an agent that really sparked to it. And then, you know, and then slowly, you know, we went along and we found the right publisher for it. And, and they really got behind it and, and you know, were very lovely. A, a relatively small publishing house, but a very well-respected one. Um, and, it, and it did great. Yeah. So when did you decide that you also wanted to do filmmaking or had you always wanted to do both? I'd always wanted to do both, and I, you know, I definitely um, had studied screenwriting, uh, you know, on my own, and, and had, you know, been writing screenplays. So I'd learned that craft early on, and um, and then I got an opportunity to direct, and I had just done a few course, short courses in directing. It was something that I was thinking about for the future, but when this opportunity came up for I can't think straight, I just kind of thought, well, you know, how often is this going to happen? Let me give it a go, and you know. It's, insane on the one hand because i really <laughs> it was my first time on a film set and i was the director um and it was it turned into a real baptism of fire because we we had a torrid time on that movie you know we had a very difficult so-called investor um you know the classic first movie days get chopped out of your schedule you know you're getting thrown out of locations you know you have one reel of film left to do too many shots so it, it was just all chaos but having got through it was probably the best film school ever just uh, get in there and survive. And then, okay, well, it didn't kill me, so. 
and it went on to do very well. And now you're you're developing it again into a into a musical. So what is that process like? This the story you've already told twice, getting ready to tell it uh, a third time in a new in a new medium. Yeah, well, it was interesting. Psychonic Straight is is was very loosely based on the story of, of me and Hanan, uh, and our, our but made into a romantic comedy rather than the traumatic, you know, culture clash between two women of color who wanted to be together. It was a very difficult time with our families, but but I kind of thought, let me just explore that in a more comedic, romantic way, and so that's how I can't think straight came about. But I think the structure of it um, lends itself to being a musical, and my my manager uh, introduced me to a wonderful young woman who writes musicals for bo- uh, books for musicals, and so she said, let's work on this together. So we're just still in the very early stages, and just talking to a really talented composer who also worked on the movie. So, you know, I, I think musicals take years to get to get produced. So we're still in the very early stages, but I'm very excited about it because I love musicals. So it would be, and I think there's an East meets West theme there. I think it's a love conquers all. So I think it has everything that it needs to, to be really exciting. And then you'll be, I assume, writing the lyrics or will you just be directing the film version or how involved will you be? I don't know. Let's see. I mean, initially, I'll co-write the the musical, the the book of the musical with with uh, with this writer because you know it's not something that I have tremendous experience in. And then I I, I suspect the lyrics and the words will be primarily through the composer. But I'd love to get involved in some of that, given the choice. So let's see. I'll I'll do as much as they'll let me. <laughs> That's uh, what I'd love to do because I, I I did film school for a while right away, so I and I learned quickly that I'm not I'm not great with collaboration. I'm not okay with people impacting my my vision. Uh, so okay, there's a there's a solution for that. I'll go write novels, and then I can be as, as selfish as I want to be, <laughs> which is wonderful. Okay. Uh, but musicals, I just flat don't have the talent. I can't sing. I can't. But that is the thing I most would want to do because I'm in so in awe of other people who can do it well. Will this be a one and done for you, or will this be the start of a whole new career uh, in, in musicals? You think? I never say never, because I really love musicals. But you know, for me, I'm looking at this as being, you know, uh, a learning experience as well. Uh, I hope something that I can bring, you know, something to, because I know the characters so well and I know the story so well. Um, but you know, at the same time, I'm interested to, to learn the process of how a musical gets written and gets made and gets financed and produced. So. Um, once I've been through that, maybe I'll want to do more. Or maybe I'll say never again. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope not. <laughs> and are there uh, other sh- other uh, genres, other uh, forms of storytelling that you're yearning to do as well? Um, no, I think, you know, I, I feel like right now um, is, is a really interesting time in the film industry and the TV industry. And with this book coming out and really hitting the shelves, you know, with, with some great reviews, I feel like I have my hands full with all of these. I'm, I'm really looking forward to doing more TV directing as well. I'm directing my first TV show currently here in Toronto. Um, Can you say it was? Y- yes, it's a, it's a show called The Murdoch Mysteries, which is probably one of the most popular shows in Canada and around the world. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm coming in as one of the episodic directors on that. And it's been a fantastic experience so far. So... I think for now, you know, thing, things are going, but I would never say never. I mean, you know, I, I love plays. I love uh, short form, you know, I think short form web webisodes have got a lot of uh, potential in the future. So, you know, I think I'm just, I'm open to just storytelling in whatever way makes sense for the story. So for the Athena Protocol, that was not meant to be a piece of literary fiction. It, in my mind, it was always an action adventure thriller with a message and with characters that you could care about. So I, you know, I'm happy to learn and adapt to genres and formats as I go, and I'm, I feel really privileged to be able to, to work across those. So I, I won't say no to anything as long as it makes sense for the story. Did you see yourself doing an Athena Protocol video game? Oh, very much so, very much so. I've got to, again, you know, those two sons; they'd be all over that. So yeah, I think this would be an amazing video game. I'd like. To, I don't. I'm not a much of a gamer, but you know, I've seen them play things like uh, The Last of Us and, and Biosphere. I think maybe I'm getting that wrong. I don't know. Bioshock. Bioshock. Thank you. So, <laughs> I'll, they'll be like, oh, but um, but you know, those kind of very story based, character driven games where you where you're running one big quest, and I think that could be really interesting because there's 
so many so many mission based things they could do. So yeah. Love yeah, that. they're very uh, cinematic. You mentioned The Last of Us. That's the center of my whole next year of what's coming out is The Last of Us Part Two, and then there's everything else. <laughs> right. yeah, because, because actually, when my youngest son was reading Athena Protocol, he said, "You know, you should look at these." He said, "Because this, you know, it, it has you know it has elements of the character plus the story." Um, and so, of course, I, there's no way I could start to get into playing that. At, you know, with the kind of I thought if I get into that, I'll lose all my creative work time. So I just kind of read a little bit about it and watched a few videos about it. And he told me a lot about the story. And I thought, yeah, it looked really exciting. And you know, that, I thought, what an interesting way to do a game. I would, I would much rather that than just kind of a, an app-based uh, video game. Yeah. Sure. I mean, it sounds like you can kind of do a little bit of anything you want. Well, <laughs> I can try. <laughs> <laughs> 